We'll get one final question in here. And here's another question I'm sure we could spend all two hours on, but we'll get uh, brief <laughs> responses. And then we'll wrap this uh, program up. I appreciate your time, Joe and John. Question. Do young earth creationists require accelerated nuclear decay during the flood or even, even the creation event, some would say, to account for dates of billions of years? Joe, you're leaning down to get something. My general answer is no, because the dates for millions of years come by interpreting the actual uh, um, stuff. Now, as I've said before, and I think I did on with this program, I am one of the last of the geologists who came through our university system who could not graduate until you could actually do a dating using uranium uh, lead methods and other stuff, and you had to prove you could do it and prove you could get a result. Now, they probably don't let you do this anymore because it'd be considered a health hazard. But in re reality, the thing that I learned best out of that, and I wasn't a six-day creationist then, I was just absolutely confused by the whole issue. But when we actually, 10 students in an elective class, and they all got the piece of rock that the professor has just split off, one piece of rock, we actually did our dating methods we all spent hours and hours doing this sort of stuff and then we got 10 different results now when the professor came in he said well that's what you always get right now here's how you put them all together and then did a graphical analysis of the dates and came up with one answer and i looked at that and that was i guess a trigger point in me becoming a skeptic of the millions of years because i thought if that's how our national treasure evaluated the actual budget by using 10 different results and putting them together, no wonder we're in trouble. And the same is true for geology. The more you know about radioactive dating, the less helpful uh, it is as a method for finding the age of anything. So you don't need to worry about trying to accelerate the date rates or anything. If you're a creationist, uh, you encourage all the other guys to actually get it right. Joe? Yeah, pretty much. I've had the same sort of similar experiences when I had to do an entire year of statistics for geology, um, which is interesting because the, the the old phrase "you can prove anything with statistics" really does prove true. <laughs> it, you can you can bend things in any which way direction, uh, depending on the type of data you put in, depending on what your critical factor is, depending on what the stats test is actually set up for. Um, it's not to say the same about all of statistics, and statistics can be very useful. But it all really depends on your interpretation um, of the end result and also your interpretation of the data that you put in in the first place. So you have to be very careful when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. What is the hidden underlying assumption? And the hidden underlying assumption is very simple, but it affects the entire way that you view the data. It affects the way that you create the test and it affects the way that you interpret the results of the test. And that is that what nuclear decay has been doing now, it's always been doing. So it provides an accurate measurement of Earth's history. It's that old basis of the present is the key to the past. It's that old basis that Charles Lael introduced. Uh, it's the old basis that he taught Charles Darwin and it became the foundation of modern geology and the reality is everything you see in the world teaches you that the present is not the key to the past in the slightest so any kind of measurement which is based off of that you should really be wary of I'll give if, you if, one I, if I could ask a follow-up question actually would that mean therefore and I appreciate the responses Joe and John original created rock would be um, created with a mix of let's say uranium atoms lead atoms how would you okay. respond? To let, that? let me let me sort of re remind us of two things as we finish this program. One is when we look at the creation, God actually made the world as a sovereign God. He already knew the end from the beginning. Now we struggle with this. So when you look at um, even the speed of light or radioactive decay, it tells you there's an end coming. Right, the end is built into the beginning. The earth is winding down and has been, particularly from the start. Yeah. But in reality, I suspect the invention of radioactivity was a deep rock phenomena and its purpose was to keep the earth warm because the earth was there for a few days without any sun. The mm. plants had to be put onto a warm earth. 
So there had to be a mechanism for keeping the temperature of the Earth stable. And even in a nuclear reactor, if you put, um, you know, radioactive elements underneath a covering of water, the thing that escapes is heat, right? And so you would have a heating source, and yet built into that is a terminal point for the creation. And it ties our program all together because the Bible says Christ was slain before the foundation of the world. The foreknowledge of God told him, or well, he, he used it somehow or other beyond our comprehension to know that Adam, no matter how good he was, would choose sin. And therefore, Jesus was already chosen to die on Good Friday. And the connection Joe made between the thorns coming as a curse for sin and the thorn on Christ to die for sin are uh, a well-planned event. Uh, the one reason for all the prophecies in the Old Testament, which we'll be dealing with tomorrow, is the... Uh, is the actual foreknowledge of God and uh, not just the manipulation of man coincidentally building Jerusalem where it was meant to be. We, 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 we tend to think we're in charge of the planet and radioactivity is one indication we aren't, but its usefulness is really thought about. It would have kept the earth warm. It's only after the flood when the fountains of the deep break it open and bring it up to the surface mm -hmm. that it even becomes a threat to us. And it's only our sin that turns it into hydrogen bombs so we can kill off our enemies. But that's why we need the cross. We need Christ because only he makes us friends, first of all, with him and then with each other. Very good. That's a great answer. It makes a lot of sense. I appreciate that, John. The only thing left for evolutionists to argue that the Earth is old is radiometric dating. And since it cannot get the dates of known ages correct, what makes us believe that it's reliable for rocks of unknown ages correct? Clearly, it is not only unreliable, but the fact that we know today that super heavy elements rapidly decay into stable radiometric isotopes that date millions or billions of years old, even though they were just formed, proves that radiometric dating is no longer evidence for evolution or anything else for that matter. It doesn't matter how consistent their decay rates become after it cools, because the early stages of their formation have shown us that they actually form rapidly from super heavy elements through the process of Z-pinch, where these elements are quickly fissioned and decay into subatomic particles, isotopes, and radioactive elements. Not only that, when they do form, they form in the arrangement of elements that matches exactly what we find on Earth's crust today, observed at the Proton-21 laboratories in Ukraine. Evolutionists claim that the Earth's radioactive elements came from material that evolved inside a star that exploded and the debris later formed to create Earth. But now we know stars cannot create any element above iron, so how could their theory be true? It can't. Evolution has been dealt its death blow regarding radiometric dating. But what about the Earth? They have been telling us that Earth's core has three main sources of energy, which are potassium, uranium, and thorium. If this is the case, then why don't we find more of it the deeper we go? Clearly, over billions of years, these heavy elements, like uranium, would be concentrated in the core. And now they admit that experiments show that there is no uranium or thorium at Earth's core. So the idea of the slow geologic process and the dates along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge prove nothing in regards to how old the Earth is. This is best explained by Noah's Flood, as when the fountains of the Great Deep broke forth and opened at this location, the water currents pushed away from it these radioactive elements which settled into the newly formed rock layers. This also explains why 90% of the heavy elements uranium and thorium are on the crust of the earth and not deep within the mantle. It also explains why lower rocks in the crust of the earth date older than on top, since radioactive elements are dated older have more atomic weight. So we see uranium, which dates the oldest, in the lower levels because it weighs more, and the lighter elements on the top, which date much younger. So, if young Earth creation were true, 
then nearly all of the radioactive elements would be concentrated on a crust because of Noah's Flood. If evolution were true, and deep time, this would have allowed the elements to sink all the way into the core. What do we find? 90% of all radioactive elements are in the crust of the Earth. But if that's not bad enough, distribution is very uneven. 50% of all the radioactive elements are in Australia alone. All the strange words make sense! You see, Charles Lyell was a lawyer from England and a novice geologist, and he made up the geologic column that we have today. He did this with the intent of removing the biblical science from the education system, and it worked perfectly. Even though he made the entire thing up and admitted it, and Darwin took his work and expanded on it, the entire thing is based on a lie.